Welcome again guys to another one of my mathematics tutorial videos. In this video, we will be looking at coordinate geometry, in particular Cartesian planes. What is a Cartesian plane? This is a diagram showing the intersection of two perpendicular number lines. The horizontal line is called the x-axis and the vertical line is called the y-axis. When drawing a Cartesian plane, the numbers on the axes are equally spaced. Zero lies exactly where the two axes intersect. In a Cartesian plane, there are four quadrants. The upper right hand side refers to the first quadrant, the upper left hand side the second quadrant, the lower left hand side is our third quadrant and our lower right hand side is our fourth quadrant. What is a Cartesian plane used for? A Cartesian plane is used to show the location of points. Each point on a Cartesian plane is represented using the format x, y, where x represents the location relative to the x-axis and y represents the location relative to the y-axis. The above representation of a point is called an ordered pair, which means that the order in which the values or coordinates are written is important. X always written before Y in our alphabet, so that should be easy to remember which coordinate appears first, our X coordinate, and it is followed by our Y coordinate. Let's plot some points. Here I have six points. Now it is important to note that if our x coordinate is positive, it means that I move to the right. If my x coordinate, as in number three, it's negative, I am going to be moving to the left. If my y coordinate is positive, it means that I'm going to move upwards. If, however, it is negative, as in the case of number 2 and number 5, I will be moving downwards. Now, A is our point 3, 2. So I start at my origin and I move 3 units to the right on my x-axis. It is followed by 2 units upwards on my y-axis. So my point A actually lies here. My point B is 1, negative 4. It means I start at my origin and I move 1 unit to the right on my x-axis followed by 4 units downwards on my y-axis. So my point B actually lies here. My point C is at negative 2, 1 which means I start at my origin and I move two units to the left, followed by one unit upwards. So C should lie here. D is the point three, zero, which means I start at my origin and I move three units to the right, followed by no movements upwards or downwards. It's going to mean that my point D is actually right here. My point E is at 0, negative 3, which means I start at my origin and I don't move either left or right. However, I move downwards 
three units. So my point E actually lies here. O is the point zero, zero, which means I start at my origin and I neither move left nor right, nor up or down. So my point O is actually right at that intersection. Reflection in the Cartesian plane. Remember in a reflection, the object is flipped about a line called the mirror line. The image has a different orientation and it is said to be laterally inverted. If we were to slide the object across to its image, it will not fit on its image. Have you ever wondered why the word ambulance is written backwards on the vehicle? It is because when you look into your rearview mirror, the image ambulance is going to appear correctly written. Your object, which was written laterally inverted, is now going to be written correctly when you see it in the mirror. Let's take a point three, four. I want to reflect it in my y axis. In order to do this, I need to determine how far away it is from that mirror line. If I look, I am going to see it is one, two, three units away from my mirror line. In order to find the reflection of that point, I will need to count the same number of units on the other side of my mirror line. That object will now have its image lying at this point. Let's take another point. I want to reflect this point in the x-axis this time. I use the same process as I did for my last example. I need to determine how far away my object point is from my mirror line. If I check, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six units away from my mirror line. In order to find my image point, I will check six units on the other side of my mirror line. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my object should really lie here after it is reflected. This new object here is called your image. Let's take another point. And this time, we are going to reflect it in a line other than the y-axis and the x-axis. So we are going to follow the same procedure to reflect that point. I need to check how far away it is from my mirror line. I can see that that point is actually one, two units away from my mirror line. So my image is also going to lie two units away from my mirror line, but on the other side of the mirror line. Simple. My image lies here. What if we are presented with the scenario of reflecting an object? In order to reflect an object in a mirror line, we must first determine where the vertices of my object lie. 
there's one there. Another one is there. And my last vertex is there. Now, in order to reflect my object in a mirror line that, let's say, is here, I will need to follow the same process as I did with my last points. So my first point is actually one, two, three, four, five, six units away from my mirror line. My second vertex is one, two units away from my mirror line. And my final vertex is one, two, three, four, five, six units away from my mirror line. So in order to find my image points, I will look for that same number of units across on the other side of my mirror line. Let's go. There's one image point there. Another is going to be here. And another one is going to be here. So this is actually where my image of my triangle is going to lie. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more of my videos.